Welcome to the official Ahrefs tutorial. Now, if you're new to Ahrefs, old to Ahrefs, or just wondering what Ahrefs tools can do for your business, then this video is for you because I'm going to walk you through some practical, repeatable, and actionable use cases that you can get value from today using our six core tools. So let's kick things off with the first core tool, a fan favorite, Site Explorer. This is our competitive research tool, and with it, you can see a website or page's backlinks, the keywords it ranks for in Google, the Google search ads campaigns it's running, the entire site structure in a tree format, and even the pages that are responsible for generating the most search traffic. Now, because there are so many things that you can do in Site Explorer, we won't be able to go through all of them. So let's hit the low hanging fruit first. The first use case is to restore lost link equity from broken backlinks. If your company has ever deleted pages, acquired other websites, or done any kind of migration, then chances are you have some broken pages across your site. That's all good, but if these broken pages have backlinks pointing at them, then all that link equity is being wasted. And because we know that backlinks are one of Google's most prominent ranking signals, we want to take advantage of these backlinks by either restoring these pages or redirecting the broken URLs to relevant live pages. So to find broken pages with backlinks, you can start by entering your domain in Ahrefs Site Explorer. Then go to the Best Buy Links report, which will show you pages that have the most preferring domains pointing at them. Now to find broken pages with backlinks, all you need to do is set the HTTP code filter to 404. And immediately we're able to see tons of broken pages with backlinks. Now I don't know whether to be excited that we have tons of new opportunities or disappointed that we've been wasting link equity this whole time. Anyway, for Ahrefs, we could redirect this old pricing page to our current pricing page in this page on asking for tweets to our blog post on cold outreach to reclaim around 90 referring domains. Now, another thing you can do is find featured snippet opportunities for your site. To do that, go to the organic keywords report with your domain set as the target. And we're just going to set a few filters. First, I'll set a positions filter with the range of the top 10 because it's pretty much required to be on the first page to earn the featured snippet. And then I'll set a SERP features filter to where target doesn't rank and select the featured snippet checkbox. Hit show results, and now you can see thousands of keywords where you can try and optimize your pages to try and win the featured snippet. We have a complete tutorial on how you can do that, so I'll link that up in the description. Now, even if we won just 15% of these featured snippets, heck, even 5%, that could accumulate to a ton of search traffic. All right, now it's time to do some competitive research. So let's say that I'm doing SEO for ConvertKit, an email marketing tool. The site gets around 150,000 monthly visits from organic search, according to Ahrefs Site Explorer. Not bad, but I know that there's a lot more traffic potential from email marketing topics. So to get started, I'll go back to Site Explorer to run a search for one of their competitors, MailChimp.com. And whoa, they get over 7 million monthly organic visits. Quite a stark difference. Now, if I add the organic pages to the performance graph, you'll see they have well over 15,000 pages that rank in the top 100 of Google. That's a lot of pages to analyze, and I'm sure the majority won't be worth analyzing. So this brings us to the next use case, which is to reverse engineer a site structure. And this is particularly useful when analyzing big sites like MailChimp because you can quickly find the parts of their site that are responsible for generating their search traffic. So to do this, I'll go to the site structure report. And this report is going to chop the site into subdomains and subfolders, giving us a high level view of its structure. So we can see that the majority goes to their root domain. And if we expand this, you'll see a more detailed breakdown. Not surprisingly, roughly 37% of their 6.8 million organic visits goes to the resources subfolder, which is their blog. The kind of surprising thing here is that they have a subfolder called Marketing Glossary that gets over 1 million monthly organic visits, which is like 6.7 times ConvertKit's total estimated organic traffic with just 70 pages. Now we have an area of their site where we can focus our attention. And this brings us to the next use case, which is to find and replicate your competitors' most trafficked pages. So to narrow in on just MailChimp's marketing glossary pages, I'll click on the number in the organic pages column. And this is going to open up the top pages report, which shows you pages that generate the most search traffic for your target. In this case, MailChimp's marketing glossary hub. 
By the way, the top pages report is also accessible in the sidebar if you're looking for it. Now, the data table in and of itself is valuable here because you can see the exact topics you should cover if you want to try and replicate their content hub. You can also click on any of the keywords dropdowns to see the exact keywords the page ranks for. In this case, you'll see their email marketing guide ranks for thousands of keywords, which are clearly relevant and valuable to a company like ConvertKit. All right, so by this point, we found tons of featured snippet opportunities, reclaimed some link equity from broken backlinks, and found some topics worth going after. But writing the content and hitting the publish button probably won't be enough to get the results you want. And that's because you'll need backlinks to rank for anything remotely competitive. And that brings us to the next use case, which is to analyze your competitors' backlinks for link building opportunities. Now, when you're looking at a backlink profile, you're going to be analyzing it from either the domain or page level. And depending on the mode you choose, the insights you'll be looking for will be different. Let's talk about finding link building opportunities when looking at a competitor's backlinks at the domain level. To get started, I'll enter a competing domain in Ahrefs Site Explorer and go to the backlinks report. Now, when you're presented with a backlink profile like this one that has over 800,000 backlinks, your chances of finding anything remotely insightful by manually sifting through these is slim. But if you know what you're looking for, then filtering backlinks at the domain level can be a super useful link prospecting method. For example, if I know that I want to find resource page opportunities, I can filter through MailChimp's backlinks where a footprint like resources.html is in the referring URL. Heck, let's actually add more footprints like resources.php, resources.asp, links.html, links.php, and links.asp. I'll also hit the Any Rule tab since I'm interested in referring URLs that include at least one of these footprints. Hit the Show Results button, and I now have over 600 potential opportunities to reach out for some good old resource page link building. Now let's reset the filters. This time, let's say that we want to find listicles where MailChimp is recommended so we can reach out to these bloggers and ask them to include ConvertKit in their roundups. Knowing that these are usually in best of listicles, I can simply search for pages where the words best, email, and tool are all in the titles of referring pages. Let's hit apply and show results. And look at these results. We have around a thousand hyper relevant link building opportunities where it might make sense to reach out and ask to be included in the roundup. Now let's switch gears and look at some use cases when analyzing backlink profiles at the page level. And it might be easiest if I walk you through an example of what a page level analysis might look like. So this is a blog post from HubSpot on email marketing statistics. Now, the reason why I might look at this page's backlink profile is because either A, I want to create my own competing page targeting email marketing statistics, or B, I want to know how HubSpot got so many links to their page to see if there's something that I can replicate. Now, again, trying to manually sift through like 14,000 backlinks is going to be a huge waste of time. So to be more efficient with our analysis, we can actually go to the anchors report, which will show us all anchor texts of backlinks pointing at HubSpot's URL. Now, when looking at the anchor text, we can actually see that most people are linking to HubSpot's page because of specific stats like this $42 for every dollar spent stat, 93% of B2B marketers, 73% of millennials, and so on. Basically, we know the things that people find interesting enough to actually link to a page about email marketing statistics. So there's two actionable takeaways here. Number one, from a content creation perspective, we'd want to include stats on similar categories or subtopics that are mentioned in or around anchors because these are clearly linkable points as proven by HubSpot's page. And number two, we'd ideally want to include up-to-date stats for these linkable points because if there are any severely outdated stats on HubSpot's page, then it may act as a pitch angle for a link outreach campaign. For example, let's say that the $42 return for every dollar spent stat changed to a $100 return for every dollar spent in email marketing. That's a pretty huge difference. And I'd want everyone to know that email marketing has changed for the better. So I could come back to the backlinks report for this page and then filter for backlinks that contain $42 in the anchor or surrounding text. And just like that, we have over 600 link prospects that we could potentially contact with our new and up-to-date data.
And this is more or less what we did for our page on SEO statistics and we've earned tons of referring domains and have been ranking in the top three for quite some time now. We have a full three part case study that'll walk you through how you can do this. So I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now this manual type of backlink analysis might take a bit of practice if you're new to SEO or link building. So if you're looking for a super simple yet effective link building tactic, then try broken link building because it's super easy to do with Site Explorer. Now, if you're new to broken link building, it's when you find a broken page that has backlinks pointing at them, you create your own page on the topic, and then reach out to those that are linking to the broken page and ask them to link to you instead. So to find pages with backlinks, you can search for a competitor in Site Explorer. I'll stick with our email marketing example and enter getresponse.com. Next, I'll head on over to the Best Buy Links report. Finally, I'll set an HTTP code filter to 404 to find pages on GetResponse's site that are broken. And right away, you'll see some broken pages on topics like what are pop-ups, follow-up emails, and email marketing mistakes. All topics that would make total sense for ConvertKit to create. Now to see who's linking to these pages, you can click on a caret beside a URL you want to investigate and then go to the backlinks report. From here, you can reach out to the people linking to these broken pages and ask them to link to your new guide on the topic. This is obviously a pretty basic overview of how broken link building works. So if you want to learn more on actually executing the tactic, I'll leave links for you in the description. Now there's a lot more use cases in Site Explorer, and if you want to learn more about them, then you can watch our how to use Ahrefs course or our certification videos in Ahrefs Academy, but the show must go on. So, we're going to move on to some use cases in our second core tool, which is Keywords Explorer. Keywords Explorer is our keyword research tool, and it's often the first place people go when they get access to our tool set, and for good reason. There are tons of practical use cases for just about anyone, and there's also some unique features that only Ahrefs has. Now, most of the use cases that I want to talk about are related to generating keyword ideas. So we'll pretend that we have an e-commerce store that sells camping equipment to set the scene. So the first thing I'll do is go to Keywords Explorer and enter a few broad seed keywords related to our niche like camping, tent, sleeping bag, and campfire. Next, let's go to the matching terms report. And this brings us to our first Keywords Explorer use case, and that's to find keywords by search intent. Search intent represents the reason behind a searcher's query. And it's important because our pages need to match the intent of searchers in order to rank high in Google. Now, analyzing SERPs for thousands of keywords one by one will be quite time consuming, especially at this keyword generation stage. So a quick and easy way to find keywords by search intent is to use keyword modifiers. And a modifier is just an add-on to a base keyword. For example, best, how-to, tips, and buy are all common modifiers. Now, the way we use modifiers in Keywords Explorer is by using the include filter. So if we want to find informational keywords, we can include modifiers like how, what, when, where, why, tutorial, and tips. Then hit the any word tab, click apply, and then show keywords. And just like that, we have a massive list of informational keywords we can create content on with our blog. Now, if I want to find commercial keywords, then I can hit the include filter and enter words like best, versus, and review. With the any word tab set, I'll click apply and then show keywords. And now you're looking at keywords that almost certainly have commercial intent. Now, based on what I'm seeing from the keyword difficulty scores, a lot of these topics seem pretty competitive. And this brings us to the next use case, which is to find low competition keywords. And there are two ways to do this. The first way, is to set a keyword difficulty filter with a maximum value of something low like 10. And when we apply the filters, you'll see some much lower difficulty keywords. Now, Ahrefs keyword difficulty score is based solely on the number of referring domains pointing at the top 10 pages for a keyword. It doesn't take into account anything like the on-page factors of the ranking pages, nor does it consider something like website authority, which may make competition more challenging. And this brings us to the second method of finding low competition keywords, and that's to use the lowest DR filter. This filter helps you find keywords where non-authoritative sites are ranking high in the SERPs. So let's actually clear our KD filter, and this time, I'm gonna set a lowest DR filter with a value of 30. 
And this is going to show us keywords that have at least one website with a DR up to 30 in the top five. And when we apply the filter, you'll see some keywords with low keyword difficulty scores and mid-level keyword scores too. And if we expand one of the SERPs, you'll see that indeed, there is a result in there with a DR of 30 or under. Now, while the Keyword Ideas Report can help you find tons of keywords worth going after, you may already have your own list of keywords that are important for your business. And that brings us to the next use case, which is to bulk analyze a list of keywords. To get started, I'll go to the Keywords Explorer homepage and paste in my list of around a thousand blog keywords and run the search. And now you can view the metrics for just your list of keywords. You can group them by terms or by parent topic. Zoom into one of the parent topics to see all keywords from your list in that cluster and set any filters to narrow in even further. And you can actually enter up to 10,000 keywords at a time in Keywords Explorer, allowing you to analyze pretty much any custom list you might have. Now, when you enter your own list of keywords, this actually opens up a super cool use case. And that's to see organic share of voice for your competitors based on any set of keywords. All you have to do is go to the traffic share by domains report and right away, you'll see the sites that rank for your list of keywords along with the traffic share they own. You might also notice certain sites like YouTube that are taking a significant share of this traffic. And that tells us that a lot of these keywords likely have video intent. Now, from a workflow perspective, you can actually follow the rabbit hole here. For example, I haven't heard of the site Beyond the Tent. So to research the site, all I have to do is click on the carrot, click to top pages, and now I can see all the topics that are sending them the most search traffic. Seeing as many SEO processes begin with keyword research, Keywords Explorer is a great place to start and you should have absolutely zero issues finding plenty of topics worth going after for yours and your client's sites. Now, while Site Explorer and Keywords Explorer are critical in content creation and link building, technical SEO is important too. And our third core tool, Site Audit, is going to help you keep your site in good technical health. So with Site Audit, you can run crawls on your website to find and monitor for over 100 technical and on-page SEO issues. To run a crawl, you just need to create a new project and either import your websites from Google Search Console or you can add them manually. GSC is the faster option, but if you go the manual route, you'll need to go through this process of entering your domain, verifying ownership if you want access to some advanced crawling options, and then schedule your site audits. I'll leave everything to default, but I'll hit the crawl settings tab because I actually want to enable checking the HTTP status of external links. I'll skip the rank tracker settings and run the crawl. Now, once your crawl is completed, you'll be brought to the overview report, which will give you a high level overview of all technical and on-page issues we found on your site. So you'll see categories for specific things like issue distribution and HTTP status codes. You'll see the top issues table, which lists the most common issues we found on your site, as well as the number of affected URLs. And then you'll see your site's health score, which represents the percentage of URLs that didn't have an error on your site. Now I could spend the next three hours going through each and every report, but that's what our certification course is for. So I'll spare you the extra technical details. And instead, I'll walk you through a very simple workflow you can use in Site Audit. I'll show you how to use advanced filters to find literally anything you want on a site. And I'll show you a crazy simple way to use Site Audit for internal linking. Let's start with the workflow. Now, if your main goal is to keep your site in generally good technical health, then all you'll really need to do is work on fixing the issues we found when crawling your site. To see the issues we found, you can head over to the All Issues report. Now to prioritize, you'll want to work on the red ones first, which represent actual errors. Then you'll want to work on the yellow ones, which are warnings, and then the blue ones, which are notices. Now, if you're not sure what these issues are or how to fix them, then just click the info icon for the issue in question to find out. And to see the URLs that are actually affected by this issue, click on the number in the corresponding row, which will open Page Explorer, showing you the affected URLs. Then it's just a matter of rinsing and repeating until you've fixed all the issues. Now, when your next scheduled crawl runs, head back to the All Issues report, and you should be able to see the changes for each issue reflected in these columns. Now, the predefined issues in Site Audit, like 404s and missing meta descriptions, are 
pretty common, but more likely than not, there's going to be some edge cases where you need to find something very specific on your site. The good news is that this can be done with advanced filters and tools like Page Explorer and Link Explorer. So let's click over to Page Explorer. This is the heart and soul of Ahrefs Site Audit Tool. We give you all the raw data that we've crawled so that you can slice and dice it in any way you want. To do that, you'll need to hit the advanced filter. And from here, you can set pretty much any filter combination you'd like. For example, this site is a recipe blog that links out to various affiliate programs, Amazon being the most linked domain. Now the way they link is mostly using Amazon's shortened domain for affiliates, amzn.to. Now let's say that they joined a new affiliate program with higher payouts than Amazon. They'll need to swap out the links, but rather than doing a full site-wide change to thousands of pages straight out the gate, they might want to test the new affiliate links on a dozen or so pages to get a decent sample size for conversion rates. So let's do that. I've already run a crawl for this site, so let's head over to Page Explorer and hit the advanced filter. Now I'm going to create a group, and in this group, I'll set a rule to find URLs that have an external link containing amzn.to. And I'll add another group where URLs link to amazon.com. Let's set the group's logic to OR because either of these can be true to accomplish our goal. And finally, I'll set an organic traffic filter to show pages that get at least 1,000 monthly organic visits. Hit apply, and now you can see 52 pages that match our filters. Now, technical SEO issues can be quite bespoke, and that's why we have literally hundreds of possible filters you can use and combine to find just about anything you'd ever want to find in a crawl. So go and try it out for yourself. Now, advanced filters are also available in Link Explorer as well as internal link opportunities. And actually, the internal link opportunities is the last part of Site Audit that I want to show you today. This tool shows you internal linking opportunities based on keywords your pages rank for. So we show the page we recommend you link from, the keyword that's mentioned on the source page, which is also the keyword that the target page ranks for, and the page we recommend you link to. On top of that, we show the context of where the keyword appears on the source page. Now, looking at an entire site's internal linking opportunities can be overwhelming. So what's often a more effective process is to look for internal linking opportunities page by page. For example, this blog post on keyword research is an important page on our site because it helps people learn how to do keyword research using our tools. So in the internal link opportunities tool, I'll set a target page filter and paste in the URL to our keyword research guide. Hit return, and now we have over 300 potential pages we can link from to our keyword research guide. Now after you've created content, added links, made technical and on-page optimizations, you're going to want to track ranking movements to see if your SEO efforts are paying off. And the perfect way to do this is with Ahrefs Rank Tracker tool. Ahrefs Rank Tracker lets you monitor your Google rankings over time. You can track rankings from any country, city, and even down to the zip or postal code. On top of that, you can segment your keywords using tags and also track your performance against your competitors. Now, because rank tracking is often used for reporting, I want to give you a quick tour of some of the main features I know you'll get value from. So in Ahrefs, rank tracking campaigns are a part of projects. And projects are simply websites that you can add to your dashboard for automated tracking. Now, you should have already created a project when you signed up with Ahrefs, so let's talk about adding keywords to your project. So at the top, you can select a country, a more specific location in that country, and the language of your selected Google search engine. And right below that, you can add keywords you want to track. Now, you also have the option to add tags to your keywords. And tags are just a way you can group your keywords together, which is helpful when reporting or analyzing certain segments of your site. For example, you may want to group your keywords by landing pages, free tools, and blog posts. Or maybe you want to group keywords by category for your e-commerce store, like hats, shoes, women's, and men's. Tags, in my opinion, are worth mapping out because it'll make your rank tracking analysis much easier, and you'll see why in just a second. First, let's go over the Rank Tracker Overview Report. So I'm in our Rank Tracker project for Ahrefs blog with our timeframe set to the last 12 months. Now, front and center, we have these charts, 
and they give you a nice visualization of various categories like share of voice, average position, traffic, SERP features, and positions. And these graphs are affected by the filters you set. For example, if I click on tags and select one of our writers, you can see how their content has been performing over the set time frame. Switch the tag to our freelancers, and we can now see how their content has been performing. Now, below these graphs is the data table. Here you'll see ranking, keyword, and traffic data for each of your tracked keywords. Click this button to see position movements for the keyword, or hit the SERP button to see the top 100 ranking pages for that keyword. Basically, the overview page offers a plethora of data that'll really help you understand what's happening with your rankings. Plus, it's a great place to grab screenshots for any reporting you may be doing. Now, a really cool feature in Rank Tracker is that we automatically keep track of your competitors too. So if we head over to the competitors overview report, you can see the same data we just went over, but you can also see how your competitors are performing in every category and for every keyword too. Now, even if you didn't add any tracked competitors to your project, you can still get competitor insights by hitting the competitors traffic share report. And in this report, you can see all of your organic search competitors for your tracked keywords. So looking at the pages tab, you can see the exact pages that you're competing with in organic search based on your tracked keywords. Now, if we hit the domains tab, you can see all websites that are ranking for keywords you're tracking. In our case, you'll see that both Shopify and HubSpot own more traffic than us for the keywords we're tracking, which tells me that A, we should probably add them to our track competitors, and B, they probably rank for a ton of other topics that might be interesting for Ahrefs blog. So these are a couple sites I might dig deeper into in Site Explorer at a later time. Now, everything we've covered up to this point are our core SEO tools, but we actually have a couple other tools that are super versatile and are go-tos for creatives and content marketers too. Let's talk about the first tool, which is Content Explorer. Content Explorer is a search engine made for marketers. Just search for any topic and run the search. And right away, you can see all pages that match your query, along with their social and SEO metrics. Best of all, you can apply any combination of filters to really dig into the data. And that brings us nicely to the first use case. In fact, you're actually looking at it, and that's to find low competition topics with high search traffic potential. So all I've done here is entered a broad query like backpack. Then I set a referring domains filter with a maximum value of 10, a page traffic filter with a minimum value of 500, and a word count filter with a minimum value of 500. So to translate this into plain English, we're looking for results that mention the word backpack, don't have many referring domains, meaning low competition, yet they get a lot of search traffic and are over 500 words long, so likely blog posts. And if we look at the results, you can see great topics like this one that only have a few referring domains, yet get tons of organic traffic every single month. Click the page traffic box, and you can see the exact keywords it ranks for, its ranking positions, and a whole bunch of other insightful keyword metrics. Now, Content Explorer can also be a great place to prospect for guest posting opportunities. Just search for a query related to your niche like knitting. Now we need to set some filters. So first, I'll set a DR filter of 30 to 65. And DR, or domain rating, represents the overall strength of a website's backlink profile. Next, I'll set a minimum website traffic filter of 5,000, which should narrow our results down to sites that are likely in good standing with Google, seeing as they get a good amount of organic traffic. And finally, I'll set a minimum word count filter of 500, which should narrow our results to mostly blog content. Hit show results to load the new results, and then let's head on over to the websites tab to see which sites best match our query and filters. And just by looking at the domain names, you can infer that sites like Nimble Needles, Love Life Yarn, and All Free Knitting would make sense to pitch guest post to for a knitting site. Now, if you wanna learn more simple use cases in Content Explorer, just go to the Content Explorer homepage and hit the Use Cases tab. Then enter a query and choose the use case you're interested in trying. In this case, I found a ton of broken link building opportunities for a recipes site. 
Now, last but not least, let's talk about our final tool, Web Explorer. This is one of the newest tools in Ahrefs, and it's truly a one-of-a-kind tool. With Web Explorer, you can search through all pages, domains, and links that are indexed by yep.com, which is our search engine. In fact, the index that Web Explorer uses is around 500 billion pages, which is around 36 times larger than Content Explorer's index. So that means that you can search through pretty much anything you'd want across the entire internet and filter them down by SEO metrics. Now, one simple link building tactic you can do with Web Explorer is unlinked brand mentions. Now, the way unlinked mentions link building works is to find pages that mention your brand name but aren't linking to you. Then you reach out to the author or editor and ask them to link to you on your mention. Now, the reason why this works so well is because the battle is already halfway won. They know who you are, probably like you, but they may have just forgotten to link to you. So here's how it's done in Web Explorer. For hrefs, we'd search for hrefs minus site colon hrefs.com minus outlink domain colon hrefs.com. And all supported search operators can be accessed through this dropdown. Now, when we run the search, you'll see around 48 million pages that mention hrefs that don't live on hrefs.com and are not currently linking to any page on hrefs domain. Now, another cool thing you can do in Web Explorer is search through all links to and from pages in the yep.com index. As an example, let's use it to find pages on gardening that link out to Amazon affiliate URLs. Now, a few reasons why you might search this is to find potential acquisition targets, to find websites that might be interested in joining your affiliate program, or to find affiliate content ideas for your own gardening website. So to find these pages, let's start by searching for gardening, and then within parentheses, I'll add outlink domain colon amazon.com or outlink domain colon amzn.to. Hit search, and we now have millions of pages that match our query. Now, if you want to explore more use cases in Web Explorer, you can go to the Web Explorer homepage, hit the examples tab, and key in a query. Then hit one of the example searches you want to run. And this will bring you to the results page with the query filled out and relevant filters set. So in this case, I'm looking at resource page opportunities that mention fitness in the title. Now I've barely scratched the surface with all available use cases in Ahrefs because that would be an impossible task. In fact, I created a seven hour course that digs deep into how Ahrefs works and I still wasn't able to cover everything. So what I recommend you do is to actually try some of these use cases and also check out some of our other tools like competitive analysis that includes tools like Content Gap and Link Intersect. Try our batch analysis tool, which lets you get SEO metrics on up to 200 targets in seconds. And don't forget to install our SEO toolbar where you can get Ahrefs metrics laid over your SERPs and web pages you visit to give you the data you need while you surf the web. Let me know your favorite tool in the comments and I'll see you in the next tutorial.